Another day, another draft that will hopefully prove to be quite fruitful in our quest to finally make the playoffs. Not even to win, just for the love of God, can we get to be a playoff team sooner rather than later. We, of course, left the last episode with the poll of who we should choose, and it was a very, very close call as far as who this pick is going to be. It is going to be an offensive lineman, but this was the top three. In third place with 27 votes, we have the left guard, Al Cook. In second place with 29 votes is left tackle, Shaman Amy. And in first place with 30 votes. It was that close. Three votes separated the number one option and the number three option. Lucas Jensen out of Auburn. He will be our pick, and it's going to be very, very interesting to see how good Amy and the left guard Cook end up being and whether or not we made the right choice. But that offensive line is getting yet another bump up. By far the biggest weakness of the team. But with the addition of Jensen, if we stay at 100%, the offensive line really shouldn't be that big of a worry moving forward, or at least I hope so, although you see all of the C grades, it's a little bit rough. Lucas Jensen, how good are you? Yes. I think you guys made the right choice. Now, we 79 overall, which equates to being 15th in true talent. We took him at 5, so there are some high overalls in this draft, but he's a star development pattern at 21 years old. That is exactly what we needed. One vote separated him and Amy, but you guys made the right call. Lucas Jensen, welcome aboard. 89 strength by default, a much better pass blocker. In the meantime, well, in terms of the finesse, actually, pass block and run block power are about the same. So a very, very well-rounded option. Lucas Jensen, welcome aboard, and you are that type of game changer that we absolutely needed. We will sim to our next pick. Of course, I'm very much intrigued to see who the rest of the first round, or how the rest of the first round ended up panning out. But let's go to the second round. And again, the pressure is on for me to not completely botch this, right? So there are some quarterbacks available, but obviously I'm not concerned. We have our number one guy. It's just continuing to put that talent around him. Running back-wise, DeAndre Pruitt would be the only person that I would really consider. So we'll, we'll keep an eye out on that situation couple of fullbacks. Wide receiver-wise, only one player listed as a second-round talent remaining, that being Taylor Nande, I guess it would be, out of Yale. As a slot receiver, I mean, he's well-rounded. He has good hands. I'm a little bit concerned about the 40 time and the agility there. I can't, I can't say he'd be a major game-changer. And when you already look at us having Mack, Wilson, Farrell, and Jenkins, is he going to be that much better? I don't think so, but obviously I'd prefer to take him over the running back Pruitt. Of course, running back-wise, with Hughes and Renaud, neither have developed, but is Pruitt going to be a guy who truly develops? I mean, maybe. He's 21, has good strength. He might not be that bad. Neither is a home run pick, though, I would say. Simon Schwartz, the tight end, is fairly well-rounded. 23 years old. Probably not that great, though. I'm probably not any better than Bentley and Marshall, for that matter. On the offensive line, do we have anybody available? It's not looking too good. Bradley Heddleston. Great name. Right guard-wise, nobody. So nobody who's projected to go right about now. A couple of third-round talents. So, again, no clear person to take here. Some more third-round talents on the defensive side of things. Second round talent and Kenny Hendricks out of Alabama, who might not be all that bad. The defensive line could use a little bit of a bump up. Defensive tackle, though, with Christy Seamster and Beatty, we're not looking that bad. So I don't know. There's no clear there's no clear number one to take here from the looks of it. Maybe we'll find somebody there. Where we go? Harvey Gardner. Harvey, how good are you? Jesus, it might be worth taking Harvey Gardner. We could use another linebacker. Of course, with Clem and King, we're looking good, but we have Nolan and Larson on the left-hand side. Gardner could be 
exactly what we need, and there really isn't anybody else available. So I'm going to go with the outside linebacker out of Duke, Harvey Gardner. The question is, how good are you going to be? I hope the answer is very, I will take it. Not bad. Normal development at 23, so the chances of him getting that much better aren't that great, but that absolutely improves the linebacker core. And Lord knows we've had some second, you know, second round picks that have gone horribly for us. So Harvey, welcome aboard. Again, 79 overall. We knew that there were some higher overall players in this draft. Harvey is one of them. So I'd say so far we're two for two. Whether or not the wide receiver or running back would have been the better way to go, we'll find out here in a minute once we get to the end of the draft. That said, I am a little bit concerned about the talent level that may be remaining. There are still some quarterbacks available. And I, I have to admit I'm a little bit tempted, right? I'm a little bit tempted with someone like Jack Newell on the board from Oklahoma. Lance Foote, which is just a great name. Every single quarterback is actually still there. Running back-wise, we're not going to be taking anybody else. So you know what? I think what we're going to do here... You know, we'll keep the quarterbacks in mind. Running back-wise, the only guy we were going to potentially draft is off the board. Fullback-wise, Morgan Ware, if he falls, it might be worth it. Maybe. It depends on who else is available. Wideout-wise, Rayshon Clay out of USF. Not that bad in terms of agility. Again, the 40-yard time isn't that bad. But with the route running, that agility, the catching, Rayshon Clay might not be that bad and would probably be better suited to the draft as opposed to a quarterback at this point. So we'll, we'll remember Clay. I'm very well tempted, you know, and I'm going to. Let's look at the guys who are projected in the next round because, of course, the AI loves going off the board. We have Roy McCullough, the 23-year-old. Not that fast, not that agile. Has a ridiculous vert jump at 6'4", though, with great hands. And that could be a good sign of one hell of a tight end option. I think I like McCullough more than Clay. Clay is not that bad. Not that bad at all. But McCullough, with that height, that jumping ability, and good hands, I think McCullough right now is the favorite. What about Leonard Slay out of Northwestern? Extremely fast, which is, well, man, extremely relative, but still. 5'9", 23 years old. Same thing, though. Good route runner. The hands are a little bit concerning. It's kind of the same thing, though, where if, you know, he's got the speed, but if he doesn't win that foot race, it's an interception every time. So, ah, I think I'm going to avoid Slay. McCullough right now is my favorite, no doubt, especially over Bradley Compass. On the offensive line, Gilbert Shaw. Okay, we have a couple of options. Gilbert Shaw is extremely agile. 24-year-old pass protector. He's also pretty strong. 30 reps is a little bit low, but not that bad. Shaw wouldn't be all that bad of a pick. And Dixon Wiggins out of USF as well. Decent strength, decent agility, 21 years old. Neither of those two are that bad. I think I still prefer the wideout option just because I'm not sure how much, you know, how many more players of that ilk are going to be available in this draft. Obviously, Vlad Hansen isn't going to be an option Bradley Heddleston is still available and is not that bad. All right, so there's some good offensive line options here. Conrad Scuda as well. Right guards, Ray Gabriel. Not that bad. Probably not going to be great, but not that bad. And a tackle, Pappas Octavian out of Mississippi State. He is terrible. <laughs> Those combine grades are god-awful. What about Danny Nortman out of Texas? Also terrible. And Kadero Prude. Also pretty bad. So we have a couple of good offensive line options. Defensively, I'm not as concerned. But if we look at Cedric Saxton, strong ability, uh, ability? Strong agility as a defensive end, also known as ability. 21 years old. Might be better suited as a linebacker, to be honest. But still, pretty damn fast as well. Oh, man. I'm I'm going to go on the record and say I think the right move already is going to be to take an offensive lineman. I am still very much leaning towards taking that wide receiver. Haynes Anderson, really good speed, really good agility. Again, not the strongest, though. We have some good offensive line options. From the looks of it as well, we have some decent defensive line options as well. 
but I can't help but think take that one wide receiver option who may be the best of the rest, although Harmon France. Harmon France. Oh, God, I don't like tough decisions like this. I do not. We have some linebackers that are still available as well. Tremaine Morgan, who did not go to the Combine, which is normally a pretty good sign. It's backfired on me already, though, to take someone who did not go to the Combine. Let me take a look at other wide receivers. Is there anybody else? Again, McCullough was looking really good. In the fifth round, we have Isaac, who has good agility. We don't know how good his hands are, but he's not that bad as a slot option. Barry Golden has a good vert jump as well, good hands, but obviously McCullough is a better version of Golden. And we have Rayshon Sapp, who in fairness, I mean, again, it's just the combine. Those, those other grades are really going to let him down. So Isaac is the only other wideout that I would consider taking. But McCullough looks to be the best of that group, i got to be honest. Six foot four, that jumping, the route running, the hands. If I take McCullough, it's not going to backfire on me because there are multiple members of the offensive line that could be picked. There are multiple defensive options that could be picked. Linemen, linebackers. Oh, God. I know McCullough's fourth round, you know, because McCullough's fourth round projected, I think I have to hold off. I think I have to. And we'll just hope that he falls alongside some of the other O-linemen. So I think it comes down to Heddleston, who, again, is looking pretty damn good. Comes down to Heddleston. Octavian wasn't that great, was he? No, he's terrible. And on the defensive side of things, I think it's going to come down to one of the linebackers or the other option here. And i got to be honest, it's Tremaine Morgan that intrigues me the most. Okay, it's, it's one of those two, and we'll hope that somebody else falls. It's down to Heddleston or Tremaine Morgan. If we do pick up Morgan, that'll allow us to move to more than likely a 3-4, which might be a better setup for us. We've been running a 4-3 as of late, but if we get another strong linebacker, we've already added another one, a 3-4 could be a pretty good setup for us. Or we go for Heddleston who is extremely well-rounded and might be the best offensive lineman left in this draft. Heddleston or the mystery box? Heddleston or the mystery box? A linebacker out of Georgia. I'm going to take the mystery box. Tremaine Morgan, I'm going to type your name first on our team depth chart. Please, please, fuck. <laughs> Oh, God damn it. Did they change that? Because it used to be, like, the beginning of this year in Madden, it was a guarantee. If there was a player with decent grades, dec you know, if there, were, if there was a player who did not compete in the Combine, but had decent grades, they were always great. At least they were for me. Maybe I just got lucky. Oh, Tremaine Morgan. I mean, you might end up getting quick development at some point in time. Son of a... Bitch, the mystery box fails me again. And uh, needless to say, that's a bit of a swing and a miss. Oof. <laughs> Especially because that guy was drafted by the Saints. Ugh. All right. Is there any redemption? Those quarterbacks finally went off the board, so that's going to help me. McCullough is off the board. Isaac was the only other wideout I was considering drafting. And hopefully... He'll be available later. It was Isaac, right? As opposed to Clay or Slay. I believe it was, right? Yeah, it was. Okay. Who else is available on the offensive line? Oh my god, please. Hanson? And he was terrible, wasn't he? Yeah, he's not great. Don't tell me everyone. Conrad Scuta. He's not going to be great. Oh, we, we fucking botched it again. Every time. Every time. Oh, god. All right, who the hell... I, I don't even know who the hell we go for now. Son of a bitch. Oh, man, that was the one pick where it really needed to go well. Otherwise, it's just a massive... It's just a massive hit to the confidence. And I genuinely don't know who the hell to take now. Again, Isaac, I still feel like it's probably the best option left 
at wide receiver, even over Golden, who again was a lesser version of McCullough. So it's got to be one of those two, but I can't say. I mean, I can't say any one of these players that are left are going to be like, yeah, this is the guy. Like, this is probably not. Like, Gal uh, Gallarda here might not be that bad. Is he going to be a major game changer, though? Probably not. Tyler Troop out of Montana actually isn't that bad. And then again, Scuda is okay. The grades kind of disappoint me, though. Hudson Jerry, Cesar Holsey. Do we have anybody else here for now? Russell out of Iowa? Not that bad, but in terms of being a major game changer, absolutely not. Colton Fitch. We'd be taking him. <laughs> those combines. Oh, those combine numbers. Oh, my God. Never mind. Never mind, Mr. Fitch, or whatever the hell your name was. Good Lord, I've already forgotten it. Corners. Corners. I mean, we do have three, thanks to Campbell. As far as whether or not there's anybody here that would be a major win for us, uh, Woodard here is looking pretty good in terms of the grades. Combine scores are pretty brutal, though. What about Roy Lane out of Kentucky? Good speed. Vert jumps terrible. Woodard, again, not digging it. Bill Harney. Well-rounded, at least. I mean, maybe. Rashawn Roberts... Not terrible, but not amazing either. And then Northrop. Hey. It's not that bad. The speed's a bit low. The agility, though. The vert jump at 6'2". He could be worth it. I mean, we have... Although, Kilo Kroom out of Southern Utah. Great name. I'm sure he's terrible. How old was he? 21? Okay. So, from the looks of it, I've completely botched the rest of this draft, and it also doesn't appear to be the greatest draft at this point anyway. I can either take a wide receiver, which again, right now, we have five on the roster. Anyway, I can go for a random offensive lineman in Gallarda or Troop, and considering that's where we need the most help, that's probably what I'm going to do. I mean, if we look at who I pin there, we don't really need a ton of help in the secondary. I mean, one more corner would probably make sense, so I think I'm going to hope that somebody out of that group is still there. We're going to go for Gallarda or Troop, and I think it's going to be Gallarda. He's 23. How old is Troop? Also 23. Brennan Gallarda, welcome aboard. Just to, again, add to the massive amount of offensive line and talent that we have. He's, ooh, a 77. Okay. All right, we've redeemed ourselves a little bit. We totally botched the last round, but getting a 77 overall at this point, that is not bad at all. And knowing how inconsistent our offensive line has been, he could end up being a starter this upcoming season. Left tackle out of Buffalo. Not bad. Not bad at all. So we're back on track here a little bit. If I can get one more decent player out of this group, I think we'll be looking okay. Right? Right. So there is a fullback who is available. Isaac is still available as well. So again, Slay has the speed and agility, but I'm not taking everything else. Isaac at least has the agility and the hands from what we can tell. And Rayshon Sapp at 6'4". Not bad. I mean, he has the vert and the height and the hands. He honestly might not be that bad as a tight end, you know, convert there. So Brody McCoy is available on the O-line. Dante Graham. Ah, I'm not. I'm not feeling it. What about Tucker Berry? Or Tucker Berry? Not feeling it either. Left guard, nobody. Center, nobody. Right guard, nobody. Thank God we took that offensive lineman when we did. Because I don't think there's anybody else available. Hudson Jerry is terrible. And Holsey is also terrible. So we got our other offensive lineman, thank God, because there's nobody else available. Gilbert Ponder, hopefully you're better than Christian, is okay, but nothing special. And Ali Fair could be a decent pickup at this point. Do we have anybody at defensive tackle? We do not. Linebacker, Colton Fitch. Again, those, those are the numbers, the combine numbers, were just so bad. Teddy Hagens. Hagens? Hagens. Out of California is okay, but not great. 
Corners, nobody else is available. Safety, nobody else is available outside of Sean Paul. So as far as our best option here, I mean, the SAP is a tight end conversion. Alley Fair, Isaac's not bad. Right. Right. Two wideouts and two defensive options. We have Isaac as a potentially half-decent slot receiver. Good route runner, at least. We have Sapp, who could be a decent tight end option if we send him over, alongside Marshall. We have Fair, which, you know, we could use a little bit of extra, a little bit of an extra impact on the defensive line. And Hagen's... Eh. Let's go for Rayshon Sapp, and again, we will probably convert him over to a tight end. Sapp, how good are you? Ooh, he is going to be a very good tight end. If he's a 77 already, he's going to be more than likely at least an 80 as a tight end. 21 years old, so a chance of going up to quick development. We've, we've, we've gotten back on the right track. That third round pick was horrific, but we are absolutely back on the right track. Good short route runner, can't see the catching, I believe it's an 86. 82 jumping as well. Not bad. Not bad. We've done well to redeem ourselves, but we still have two rounds left. Let's see if we can get anything going here in these final two rounds. Odds are probably not. Do we have anybody left that's pinned? Nope. Shit. So our best bet is to just randomly select somebody off the board if we can find someone who we know isn't garbage. So O.C. Shaw out of Villanova. I mean, good agility. The vert jump's a little bit low, though, so no thank you. James Trejo. No. What about Iliar Frampton? No. <laughs> Judah McClendon. No, you're terrible, too. Okay. Do we have anybody else with, like, a half-decent combine score? Colton Fitch is there, but he's going to be awful, isn't he? Like, he can hit. That's about it. He's, he's the boss of this era. Was there anybody with a 6.0 or over? There's a random ass punter. We got a 6.3 Stanley Marsh, a corner. He's not going to be great, though. What about Brian Rasmussen? Ugh. <laughs> Just not great. Derek Irvin. Good speed and agility. I mean, why not? You can't go wrong with a wideout named Irvin, right? Derek Irvin is a 62. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Well, well, in my defense, there doesn't appear to be the, you know, that many great players left. Right? Right. Seventh round. Let's just get this over with. It really doesn't matter who we take at this point. Could take a punter for the hell of it. To be honest, it might not be the worst idea to just take a kicker, and I think that's what I'm going to do. We might as well see if he's any better than Frome. We're going to take Kerry Woodfin. Out of Louisville, Carrie, welcome. You're terrible and will probably be immediately cut, but it was at least worth a shot. So overall, outside of that third round selection, we did okay for ourselves. We really botched that one, though. Really botched that one. Let's take a look at who we did not take. See if we made a mistake here, there, or anywhere. So we go to the first round. Again, it sucks that someone like McNeil and Wofford ended up off the board. Both ended up being pretty damn good. So we ended up taking... I can get him, which we could have had Simon too. We ended up taking Jensen. So you had O'Neal, the defensive tackle, up to an 80. Hudson Chris wasn't up there, but he was an 80. Cook was a 78. Quick development, so he wouldn't have been too bad. Again, he finished third in the voting. Von Miller ended up being pretty good. Of course, it's the linebacker named Von Miller. Of course, he was good. Atkins, woo. Man, the safety talents there. Good lord. Good lord. Yates went off the board. Thompson, McCoy. And Amy was an 80. Quick development. So really, we couldn't have gone wrong. I feel like we ended up with the best one, all things considered. But we couldn't have gone wrong. So in the second round, we, of course, took Harvey Gardner. And overall, let me just check Pruitt. Normal development. So we dodged. A major bullet there. Simon Schwartz? Mmm, 23 though, so I'm not too upset about that. Let me know if I end up missing any higher overalls. I'm more more or less looking at the players 
that I was considering taking. It was all bright. I mean, you can actually, I'm looking at the overalls right now. I can't really say there was anybody great, but the third round is where we could have completely botched it. We ended up taking Tremaine Morgan, McCullough. Mm. <laughs> God, he would have been such a great tight end too. All right, well, the good thing is we did end up with somebody similar later on, of course, when we took Sap. But yeah, Roy McCullough, you, oh God, I should have taken you. I knew it. And in fairness, Hedelstein or Hedelsten ended up being pretty bad. So yeah, it was it was McCullough who we should have taken. We did not, and I regret it. Or Cedric Saxton, the defensive end, also could have been half decent. So overall, we did all right. It's just that third round, I should have gone for McCullough. But if we did, we might not have taken Sap. So odds are, I mean, granted, though, I would have rather had the bad selection be in the fifth round as opposed to the third round, but you get the points. We right now appear as a 79 overall team. I'll be back in one second to get you a look at what the squad's shaping up to be for the 2026 season. If all goes according to plan and we do not pick up an injury before week one, this is the team that will feature in that game. 81 offense, 81 defense, a 78 rating. The offensive line is the best it has ever been, with Jensen and Gallarda being new additions, Ramirez, Schuleter, and Ramsey, of course, still being here. Tight end as well, Sapp has been moved over. He has a 79 rating. He'll be the starter over Marshall, just for the fact that he's younger, and hopefully he'll continue to develop. Wide receiver-wise, it's still Wilson and Mack leading the way, with Farrell and Jenkins as the depth. Renaud will be the starter with Hughes as the backup. McCormick, of course, in 89, and Hackett also there. Defensively, we've seen some changes. Starting on the D-line, King has been moved from a linebacker down. It'll be Christie and Gilmore as the defensive tackles as well. Brooks is there. I mean, you can kind of see, though, with where King is, it's moving around a lot of players, trying to make sure that we have the best players available. There aren't really too many depth guys that we have to worry about getting playing time. So it's, you know, people are going to be moving around a lot. You know, King will get a lot of playing time. Brooks, Christie, Seamster. I'm, I'm excited, though, where the defensive line is. Corners, we have Meyer and Cole, of course. Campbell as the third option. The safety still, Griffith and Ross. Linebacker-wise, it is Gardner, Clem, and Morgan will actually play, despite being a little bit of a disappointment. I'm intrigued to see how the defense does, as opposed to just going with the best option or you know making sure that our younger guys get to play and maybe they go to quick development. Nah, screw that. We're going all in with our top options. The big question will be, again, whether or not we pick up an injury before week one. Hopefully, we do not. And I think at the very least in this episode, we will play that first game. Please don't be to a major person, please. Oh, boy. Nice. Nice. Jamon Hughes It's going to be out for the majority of the season. Great. Well, if Demarcus Renaud wasn't going to be the starter before, he's certainly going to be the starter now. Or not. Or not. Sure. We don't have a running back. Wow. We don't have a running back for the first six weeks of the season. I swear to God, if this is a major injury, it's Irvin, who we just drafted recently. Well, I was wondering if this was going to be the first season to follow along and maybe something good happens. It won't be. We have random roster fill-in Xavier James as our running back. Let's hope McCormick's arm holds up through the first six weeks of the season because odds are it's going to fall off by the end of those six weeks. We are three overall points higher than the LA Chargers. Let's see if we can get a win and maybe at least close out this episode on a little bit of a high note, but that is absolutely horrific, really, is the only way to phrase that. We do not have a running back. At least a good one. We do have one, but in name only. We need a strong effort from this new look defense with players having moved around. And, I mean, again, just throw the ball all the time. Nothing but throwing the ball, please. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. I was hoping, of course, again, that this season would be the first season where it makes sense to, you know, go week by week. We're not quite there yet. I would 
think with the way this has gone already. Although we do get a field goal on the opening drive, we respond with another one, six to three, at the end of the first quarter. Let's go to halftime. We'll get the first touchdown, six all, and the answer is us, 13-6. 13-9 is the score at halftime. All right, the defense is doing pretty good thus far. 16-9 is the score. We have the ball. Actually, we don't. The Chargers have the ball at their own 10. Third and 20. If they get a first down here, I will scream, and thankfully they did not. So let's go to a change of possession points here. Could end it. We get absolutely nothing. Still a seven-point lead. Can the Chargers get anything going? Absolutely not is the correct answer. Just under 11 and a half minutes to go. And we respond by missing a 41-yard field goal. Good God, Grant Frome. <laughs> the Chargers march down the field. A.J. Ross with an interception at the two. To save the day. Please don't blow this now. Thank you very much. 19-9. A 10-point effort. A.J. Ross. Of course, Grant hits a 46-yarder. A.J. Ross. The player of the game. No doubt about it. A huge interception on the goal line. And we win. In week one. Despite having no real starting running back. Joey McCormick. 300 and 40 yards, one touchdown, one interception, 33 of 41, though. Not too bad. Rushing-wise, James did put up 85 yards on 28 carries. Not too bad. Receiving-wise, Mack led the way with nine receptions. Yardage-wise, though, it was Sapp, the rookie, leading the way in that regard. Jamie S. Mack, though, it did catch the only touchdown of the game. The O-line was okay, but not great. Gallarda, Ramsey, and Ramirez each allowed one sack. Defensively, it was Harvey Gardner, the rookie, leading the way with eight tackles, including one of three tackles for loss in the game. We also had three sacks that game. Larson, Brooks, and King. Interceptions, two for A.J. Ross, one for Kyrie Griffith. Those safeties, it's a hell of a tandem. Four for six, Grant Frome. Oh, God, if only, if only we had a half-decent kicker. But regardless, we do win. The opening game of the season, in the next episode, we will continue along, at least until the point where it's clear that we shouldn't, but we do pick up a win in week one, despite, despite the fact that somehow this game decided, yeah, that's, that's fair, oh, let's make him better in terms of a hybrid, there we go, I was hoping he'd still go up as, uh, you know, still go up one overall point, but there you go, AJ, great game, great game for the 23-year-old. Somehow, someway, this game's like, yeah, no, injuring, injuring both, injuring both running backs, that's fair. Normally I do go with the top option, sometimes I switch it up and go with the scheme fit option as well. Didn't work out necessarily there, but that is okay. In the next episode, Minnesota, San Francisco, the LA Rams, and the Dallas Cowboys, and perhaps one more game beyond that. Mac apparently got roughed up in the last game, but is good to go now. We apparently do not have a third wide receiver option. That's really weird how it did that because the dude who got hurt wasn't that good of an option anyway and would have been like fifth or sixth on the depth chart. So I'm not sure why that got screwed up, but there you go, Sap. Congratulations. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm still damn well determined to win in this series. And again, maybe, just maybe, a 78 team, 78 overall team is good enough to finally get the job done. I hope... Probably not, though.